everyone, I'm Barbara Beck, and I'd like to welcome you to Current. I hope you're ready to be refreshed, renewed, and empowered. The ladies and I have a wonderful program lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about creative ways we can serve the Lord. And I know that as I get older, and even as my children get older, we had to always be evolving, always prayerfully thinking of new ways God wants us to serve Him, to stay fresh, if you will, and current. Part of our serving is based on what skills God gives us, but part of it is based on just listening to his voice and answering the call to serve wherever he sends us. So let's see how the current ladies and their families have responded to God's call to do good works and to serve. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Hello. Glad to have everybody here today. You know, it seems like sometimes we talk about this subject a lot, but it's an important subject to be talking about, ways to serve. I know your families, and I know how well a job, a good job you're doing with your families. What are you doing to help encourage your children to serve? Well, you know, we've had our good friend Courtney DeFeo, who has since moved to Texas, um, but she's been on the show a number of times. And so I was talking with her, wanting to talk to her, because she has a heart for service, and mm -hmm. she really has a heart to involve kids in service. And she's the one, if you remember a few years ago, um, who talked about the light em up impacts. She really pushed yeah. hard, you know, just anywhere you are yeah. to say thank you to anyone that you encounter, whether it's putting Gatorades on top of your trash can, mm -hmm. um, leaving dollar bills stuffed in the dollar store so that a child or an adult walks by and sees a dollar oh, clip to oh, something in the dollar store. Just a surprise, just little that. things that, um, and they would also pick up water bottles and drive around to construction sites and hand them out. You know, just little things that don't cost a lot of money, but that, that are instilling service into. So are you doing some of this? <laughs> well, she's got, she's got a new summer endeavor. So she has a summer booklet that she puts out that's on her website. Okay. And it's Courtney DeFeo. But she has it, and she would love for us to look at it because it's got great ideas sure. for families. Mm -hmm. But she has a new one coming out that's like family roulette. And you play a game of roulette at the dinner table each night, and it, I guess, based on, we'll have to go online and read, but, yeah. it, but it brings families together to play games to figure out new ways to serve. Okay. And I love that. Yeah, I she's love always that. thinking right. of right. good ways to serve, and it brings Thank fun you. to service. Thank you for telling us that stuff, because it's so good for us moms who are so busy in life, we, and mm -hmm. we want our kids to be out serving, just to get those little neat nuggets. I always tell my husband, when you want to know something, just go ask another mom. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't need a therapist, I need another mother. Right. Right. But it is right. true. Yeah. But you know, the Bible says the greatest amongst you mm -hmm. is the servant mm -hmm. of yeah. all. And you know, I've been in ministry all my life. My daddy was a preacher and I've just done ministry all my life. And we had a saying growing up that says we get in ministry to serve and we end up having servants. And um, so for me, all my life, it's been ingrained in me that you are the servant. You are the servant. Mm -hmm. Don't, yeah. don't leave your first love, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. And I went through a really big bout of depression in my life. And um, it's funny that part of my healing of my depression and my anxiety was getting outside of myself right. and reaching back out to others and doing my first love. And, and it's so funny that sometimes when we get out, we get with other people, we realize, mm -hmm. man, my life really mm -hmm. isn't that bad. And right. it gets us off of that self-pity right. and it gets us off and just getting out and serving others. And, you know, I tell people sometimes you can't maybe go into other countries, right? Or you right. can't do those things that we all love to do. But it's those little things of sometimes I just take a meal over to my neighbors. Mm -hmm. No reason at all. Wish I was your neighbor. I know. <laughs> Yeah, and I, love I to live cook. on three one. <laughs> Give her my address. <laughs> Listen, I love the idea of the dollars in the dollar store. Yeah, it's great. Now you know you just gave me a new tip. Yeah, right? me too. Oh, me too. too. Oh, but, but that's but yeah, but one, sharing it? it was oh, I yes. love that idea. Yes. Cuz you always have kids that are out with their parents yeah. and the parents may not have enough money to be able to yeah. buy the kids a treat. And for some little child to find a dollar bill in the dollar store yeah, and can buy that box yeah. of candy right, right. or that treat that they want right. that's magnificent. She's well, also done quarters in the bottoms of like the quarter machines. The oh quarter God. candy oh, machine. Yeah. yeah. No, didn't you Vending always, machines. Yeah. Vending, well, oh yeah. 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 That okay. Is, okay. I love that. Okay, but I've got a question about that. Because see, to me, I was always taught, and you were too, I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> if you find money out in public that you turn it in. I know I was see, taught that right? too. Okay. Right? Yeah. So not, a not a dollar. Not a dollar a quarter. quarter. So this is different. Like my grandmother, was she used to look on the floor all the time when she was walking, and I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, 
my cot is going to rain blessing upon me and I'm looking on the floor because it's going to be on the floor. And so she would literally find $20 bills, $10 wow. bills, $5 bills. But she just had that faith that she would find it. So I understand what you're saying totally, absolutely. If you find a wad of cash like that big and there's stain marks on it and there's been a bank robbery, yeah. you probably should <laughs> probably turn should that turn in. in. Yes. But truly, you know, God provides in all types of ways. And like you said, you know, that little babe that desperately just wants a little dollar, you know, dollar tree toy yeah. or whatever. Well, and maybe it's a teaching moment, Jashelle. Absolutely. If somebody says something like, well, maybe this is just from the Lord, you know, that this right. is his little gift to you. But I would still feel kind I yes. feel guilty. I see did. a dollar bill. I'm like, oh, no, what do I do with that? I mean, maybe I would spend it. I probably would because I wouldn't know what to do with it. But I think it, is, it needs to be a teaching moment. Can I tell you, though, my dad, growing up, we didn't know learn this about my father till after he passed away. But we started having people come up to us and say, you know, we just need to let you know that we were walking around the grocery store one day because we come from a real small town and your father came over to the other aisle and said God just put it on my heart that I'm supposed to give you $25 mm. I love it. and they yeah. said your dad didn't know that we were walking around that store trying to figure out mm, I want to cry mm. um, what we could get mm -hmm. for the five dollars that we had mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know it's and then another person came up and said the same thing or mm -hmm. my you know, to me, it's those little things of just giving outside of ourselves. Yeah. You know, we think about it sometimes that it's so big, but sometimes it's just the small things that tell somebody that you care yeah. and that mm -hmm. they matter. Right, right. Isn't that really what and serving that made, is about? And that God cares. Yeah. That he cared enough. And that reminds me of a story with you, Jashelle. You remember what she did mm -hmm. at a women's event? You want to share it? <laughs> yes. She wouldn't want us to share it, but share it. I think it is the coolest thing ever. Well, we were at this event last summer, and when we were finished speaking and participating, you and I were speaking with this one woman, just hearing her mm -hmm. story, and she started sharing with us about her hardships. Yeah. And Jashelle, I know you're, this is going to embarrass you, but I just was such an example <laughs> of God's faithfulness in your life and how you, how you work to honor him. Um, the woman was sharing with us and then Jashelle just very quietly pulled a hundred dollar bill out of her wallet and gave it to this woman without really anyone seeing. And the, she started crying. Didn't, oh, I mean, she just I mean, got, just you know, beside herself. just couldn't even understand how you could be so generous with someone that you yeah. just met. I actually told her, you're not going to say no, I'm going to give you something. Because, like, in the spirit of boldness, I was like, you're not going to say no, just take it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm going to spend it on something else. Yeah. Okay, and lest our viewers think that you're a millionaire. Because no. I was who carries $100 bills around no. and who just gives out a $100 bill? Your husband is with the law enforcement. Yes. And you are a hairdresser. Yes. And you do our makeup and hair for us every time we're together. Yes. And so it's not like, I mean, God provides. You have plenty Absolutely. of money, but you're not rolling yeah. in the dough. You're not a millionaire, no, no, right? No. no, no, I'm not. But the cool thing about that story um, is that what ended up happening with that hundred dollar bill right. is that we then in the same thing there was a, a, a woman being prayed for who had five children mm -hmm. who just was wrecked yeah. trying to leave an abusive relationship or she had and that lady saw it fit just right there she says I'm supposed to give this to you <laughs> And so on. what I felt in the car when I left was the Lord says this was a teaching moment for that woman that was never taught this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's so cool because God has blessed us this yeah. year. We're building a house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and it's your and first house. Working. Your first it's house first ever. House. Right. We've, you know, for the past six years have been working on getting out of debt. Um, and I do have a heart to give and I mm. haven't been able to give above my tithe. And so that was one of the days that I was like, God, yes, I can. Okay, good. You know? Yeah. And so, because I used to hold on to every penny and say, no, I need it. No, I need it for, I need it for this bill. I need it for that bill. So I just loved how that story ended. And yes, it is uncomfortable for me to talk about it because I don't, I don't like talking about it. But, but. you can't out give God. Absolutely. Right. It really comes back to that. Mm -hmm. As a man soweth, he shall reap, yeah. the Bible mm -hmm. says, yeah. you know, and so that's, it is important. Well, and what I love about this in our conversation is that it's showing there are unique ways to serve. Yeah. It's not all about going as much as this, this is important as it is to go to the homeless shelter and to dish out food to the right. homeless. And do all, there are other unique ways right. that we can be Absolutely. serving. And Deborah, you with your church, you serve yeah. in so many cool ways. Well, we do, but I want to share this scripture because okay. I think it connects with the the, the testimony about what Rochelle did, I have scriptures, Barbara. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 5 through 6, and I'm reading it from the Living Bible. It says, you younger men, follow the leadership of those who are older, and all of you serve each other with humble spirits. Mm. For God gives special blessings to those who are humble, but sets himself against those 
who are proud. If you will humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, in his good time, he will lift you up. That's good. And, it, and I, don't, I don't know if I, I told my husband, I don't know if I've ever connected humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God with serving others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Normally when we yeah. talk about that scripture, that's not the context mm -mm. in which it's talked about. But in this particular case, literally what it says is when you humble yourself yeah. and you serve somebody else, mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for a blessing. Mm -hmm. You're setting yourself up for God to do something for you that you might have been waiting and you know just thinking it Amen. couldn't happen for you. You being able to get this home, yeah. I have to believe that it is a direct correlation with your heart posture towards others mm -hmm. and your desire, even though you didn't have it to give, yeah. you had the desire to be able to give and to bless others. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, God honored that. And I just think that is so neat how God, you know, how he does those things, mm -hmm. even when we're yeah. not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, Barbara, we do a lot of things at my church, but let me tell you, this is the funny thing. Right now we're in the midst of a renovation project at the gym at Frontline Outreach. It's a big deal. Every Friday night for I don't know how long, we've had about 75 to 100 guys, young kids, um, in the gym, open gym for basketball. The gym was a mess, okay? The building's 50 years old, the gym needed to be renovated. Gym is being renovated. My sons <coughs> have become like so just taken with this gym. They are there every day. Alan, home from college, is stripping floors, waxing floors, wow. and they're doing all of these things. They're so excited about the work that's happening there. And the thing that's crazy about it is they won't be there to enjoy it. It'll be nice and clean, nice and fresh, newly built for the kids mm -hmm. that will enjoy it in the fall. Exactly. That, that's amazing to me. And to watch yeah. their excitement over it, just makes me so happy. They're sending me pictures and mm -hmm. you know, every step of the way. So my question to you, Deborah, is where did they get this heart to serve? Well, where did they come from? Well, you know what? They, they've been taught that, Barbara. Right. It, it, it has that, to be taught. And you know what? That's all they know because that's right. the life that they were born into. Right. And so, but, oh, but that's so powerful but just, to say. Yeah, but to see them find something that, that they can be passionate about yes. and not just latch on to whatever we are doing, right. mm -hmm. if you will, to be passionate mm -hmm. about. It's been the most amazing thing. They're sending pictures and videos and I'm trying to work and my phone is beeping and I'm thinking, I don't care, it's a gym. <laughs> <laughs> you think I care about them waxing right. the floor? Exactly. But who knows in five years if they're not building a, a church in another country, maybe yeah. it starts with an H, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, it's, it's just been great. To, and this is how they're spending their summer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's been, it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's so neat. I love that you said that they were born into it. And if we get any other message from, from this time together, I think it is real important for us to know that our kids need us. They need, and our grandkids, to teach them what's right to do, to right. teach them ways and strategies and that are unique to them. Uh, everybody doesn't serve the same way. I mean, everybody to have the same passions. We just need to be looking for it. But as the spiritual leaders in our households, mm -hmm. let's make sure our kids are born into this right. and, and right. have that passion and right. desire to serve. Right. Other ways that your kids have been well, serving? Well, you know, we were born into it. Jesus That's true. came to serve yes. and not to be served. Exactly. He came and was born in a manger when he sure could have been born in yeah. the throne of all thrones. Mm -hmm. Not only that, before he was crucified, he rode in on a donkey. Mm. So, you know, if we really want to be real here, yeah. we have been born into it, period. Mm -hmm. And so that is where like you said, it's a culture, her church, that's how we serve. That's, well, our God who lives in heaven, that's the culture that he wants for us. You know, I've got a scripture, Joshua 22, 5, because it really hit me hard when we were talking about service is sometimes it's just serving Christ. Yeah. That's how I look at it is I serve others because I serve Christ. And uh, it says, only be careful to observe the commandment in the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cling, mm. cling to him yes. and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. And I think that's 
what's so powerful to me about clinging to Christ, because when we cling to Christ, we cling to what matters to Him, mm -hmm. what's important to Him, and then we serve Him, yeah. not our flesh, not our desires, not our wants, or the things that puff us up, but yeah. the things that glorify Him, because we love Him. Yeah. And um, I just think mm -hmm. that's powerful. And I think there are days that you don't feel like serving. Absolutely. You may not feel like serving your husband. You may not feel like serving <laughs> your children. Uh -oh. There are that's days that show. I don't that's like serving show. a 94-year-old yeah. mother. I right. hope and pray she's not watching this right now. But there are days that I just don't, don't feel like it. And when I remember, Carolyn, what you're talking about, yeah. whatever you do unto the least of these, my brethren, you're doing it unto me. And I have to really check myself and say, mm -hmm. it's not about serving my mom. Right. You know, it's about serving Jesus. Yes. Yeah. I'm doing that, mm -hmm. but I'm doing it because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a form of worship. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I think it we is. worship the Lord when we serve others, That's when good. we get beyond yeah. ourselves. And you talk about that. I even wrote that down, ways to serve, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's important for us to know, and we can serve our neighbors and our friends, but it really does start in our home. It does. What, how can we love? How can we say we love whom we mm -hmm. haven't seen if we can't love whom we have seen? The Bible right. says, and to me, right. I can't serve my husband and serve my children with a love and a grace mm -hmm. that comes from yeah. Jesus. Then how can I say that I really love my father? Exactly. You know? Let's end with another great verse. Anybody? I've got 2 Timothy 1, 9, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, mm. but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. He just loves us so we can love others. Right. Right. Thank you, ladies. It's been a rich time, a good reminder for us to serve and start, start by serving in our homes for sure, but then to look for unique ways that are going to be helping our kids and our grandkids be born into a home where serving is really at the top of our list of, of ways that we can worship Christ. Whatever we do unto the least of these, my brethren, you're doing it unto Jesus. So what a great reminder today. We've got more good things coming up for you here. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Sometimes called the mother of the Methodist Church, Susanna Wesley grew up in London's cultured society. Her minister father taught her right alongside of his sons, which was a rare and impressive education given to a woman back then. At 19, Susanna married a country pastor. What a shock. Wow, to go from cultural center of London to some farmhouse out in the boonies. It might not have been the end of the world, but I bet you could have seen it from their front porch. Susanna herself had 19 children. Her husband was frequently absent, sometimes for years. But Susanna was determined to educate each of the kids. A six hour a day homeschooling program began at the age of five. Each child was expected to learn the alphabet in a week, and almost all of them did. For years, Susanna patiently, rhythmically taught mathematics, finance, English, Hebrew, and French. And due to the questionable teachings of an interim pastor, Susanna even started holding Sunday afternoon Bible study in her kitchen. Soon, a lot of the local parishioners were asking to sit in alongside the kids. And before long, more were participating in Susanna's kitchen society than were attending church services. So you can imagine the political shock and envy of the clergy there. When they asked her to stop, Susanna replied, you know, we need to care less about the appearance to man and more about advancing the glory of God and the salvation of souls. God's presence isn't confined to a church building. He's available in my kitchen too. Her children saw her practice what she preached. Every morning, they'd see mama with her apron thrown over her head and they knew not to disturb her. It meant that she was spending personal time with the great teacher, Jesus. Susanna's son, Charles, is known for having written over 8,000 hymns, hymns like Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Her son, John, and brother Charles, and their friend, George Whitefield, founded the Methodist Church, largely based on those practical lessons shared around Susanna's kitchen table. The results? Immeasurable. Susanna Wesley's in the great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. She teaches us that our time with the Lord isn't supposed to stay in a prayer closet or under an apron. It's to be walked out in our kitchens and the world around us. 
Thank you, Lord, for mothers who love us more fully because they love you first. They show us how to run this race set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and teacher of our faith. Oops, prayer time. Got any requests? I was reading in Genesis about the covenant that God made with Abram. Once he tells him that his new name will be Abraham and Sarai's name will be Sarah, and it's time to expect Isaac, even though they're in their 90s, God gives Abraham one more little tidbit of instruction, circumcision. God tells Abraham that he and all of his descendants must now be circumcised. He instructs him to make sure that the newborn babies are all circumcised, but not just the babies. That includes Abraham at 99 and Ishmael at 13 years old. Oh boy, right? This one really got my mind spinning. I thought, where is that kind of covenant today? For goodness sakes, I think about my own family. When I tell my kids I want them eating wheat bread and not white, they look at me like I just took away their rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. When I say to people that my husband and I would rather our children marry as young adults, attend college with their wives and pursue purity until marriage, then give in to the lie that they're gonna do it anyways, people look at us like we have a third eye. When I say even on vacation, I get up very early in the morning to spend quiet time with God because he's my best friend. People just roll their eyes as if to say, really? But this is your one time to sleep in. Where's the kind of covenant keeping discipline displayed in the book of Ruth that says, your people will be my people, your God, my God. Where's the kind of dedication to the things of God that we say to our children attending public school? Honey, you talk about God, you lead others to God all you want and leave the separation of church and state thing to your teachers. Where's that kind of dedication and discipline? I pray that it's still right here on earth. I want my kids to do hard things. I want them to walk narrow paths. I want them to choose life and the things of God over anything that this dark world has to offer them. I want us to be the weird people that do things a little different because we want to please God. I pray that we can start to see a revival for the kingdom of God like we've never seen before. I pray that believers start acting like disciples who have a calling from God to preach the good news to the entire world. I pray that modern day Christ followers remember that what our ancestors had to endure to give us the sort of rights that we take for granted daily. I pray for revival, a revival of covenants, covenants of marriage and covenants of parenting. I pray that parents get some God-given courage to be their children's parents and not just be their friends. Our kids have enough friends. They need parents. I pray for the church to start looking like the bride of Christ and not so much like bridezilla. As we begin to love each other as brothers and sisters and we display unity, no matter what church building you worship in, I want to see people baptized, Bible studies full, women choosing to submit to their husbands, and husbands loving their wives like Christ loved the church. Yes, I want to see revival. It's what my heart beats for. I want to see full church buildings with every seat taken in the sanctuary since every seat represents a soul. I'm fired up to see covenants renewed, people's minds renewed, and the bride of Christ watching and ready for the return of Christ. I want to see families standing up and saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm excited, y'all. I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about God's word. I'm excited about heaven. I don't know. Maybe I've just had too much coffee. I'm Mo Midlow with Unforsaken Women. For more on renewing your mind in the Word of God, visit us at Unforsaken Women or check out our website, unforsakenministries.com.
hope you enjoyed our program today. I know that when I observe others' lives and how they are faithfully serving, I get inspired to do more. Sometimes I get convicted that my little life is not doing enough. In fact, just the other day, my husband and I were on a walk. We were talking about superstars in the kingdom that we've known and admired who have really gone above and beyond in terms of serving. I said, I'm pretty sure my mansion in heaven is going to be small. In fact, it'll probably be a shack, but I'll be there, so I'm going to be happy. My husband agreed. You see, we've known so many people who are tireless in their service to the Lord. They go to the uttermost parts of the earth and live lives of enormous sacrifice, even facing oppression and persecution sometimes. Our lives, in contrast, have been relatively easy. I mean, I serve at a TV station, for goodness sakes. How difficult is that? I'm not in the trenches suffering for Jesus. We have a pretty nice set. I meet great people. I work with dedicated, lovely Christians. It's easy for me to come to work and I love what I do. Why would I expect great rewards in heaven? Well, this is hard to talk about and even imagine, but here's the bottom line. If we're obedient to our calling, then we will be rewarded someday. If we understand our gifts, our abilities, our passions, and we respond in obedience, then we're in line with God's will. And that's a good thing. You might be serving grandchildren. I certainly do. And I love that part of my ministry. In fact, I feel a little guilty even calling it a ministry, but it is. You might be taking care of an elderly person parent or a special needs child or a neighbor in need. Our roles might not be glamorous and might not look self-sacrificing like the missionaries on the field in hostile nations. But if it's what God's calling us to do at this season in our lives, then it's our calling and we need to be okay with that. God just asks that we do our work for him, serve him faithfully, and hopefully one of these days we'll hear his voice whispering to us and saying, well done, good and faithful servant. You may enter into your master's presence. Wow, that's mansion enough for me. And that, dear friends, is our note of hope for today. Thanks so much for joining us and God bless you.